It is our mission to provide affordable and durable technology to producers that will decrease calf mortality rates and increase producer profits. So what exactly is the problem? Well, the problem is there are 31.7 million beef cows in the U.S. alone, and 10% of them that are born will die from calving difficulty. That's 3.2 million calves a year we're talking about, and that's a lot of loss in earning potential. Each calf is around a $500 loss, and each cow can be upwards of $1,500 loss to those producers. This is just an illustration of just some of the many ways calving can go wrong. And here, this was me this past weekend, bottle feeding the calf we actually lost the mother to. It's calving season right now. So, if you can track, there are several physiological changes that occur within the cow right before first phase calving. And if we can track those, we can solve the problem. And that's exactly what we do. We have created a rechargeable, reusable collar system that tracks heart rate, body temperature, feed intake, position of the cow relative to the rest of the herd through GPS, and activity levels. I'm going to hand this off to you guys so for you to take a look and then I can turn that on for you right there. This was our first phase collar. Um, we did this a couple months ago and we've now moved on to our second phase collar and placed these that's fit to size so it is a little big and a little bulky. Um, we actually utilized a particle platform, so that's how we built the technology with our sensors. We wanted to prove that these things could work together and sync together and send data. So that's what we're using right now, and we're planning on moving to a B-series um, for production. This is how it works. The cow wears the collar. It's equipped with full cellular connectivity, and we can push um, information to the console. This is an illustration of what that interface looks like. So as you can see here, that top line is us tracking um, GPS. We can pull it up on a map and see where everything is in relation to each other, as well as any change in temperature and any change in distance traveled or movement. We wanted to take it a step further to see if we could push it to the Google Cloud. We were able to do so. That is actually an example of temperature being changed and being pushed to the cloud. And this is really important because on a production level, we want to utilize a, a reliable platform so that we can push our data and these cabin prediction scores to the producer, as well as have accurate maps. A lot of people ask me, what are you going to do in rural areas and how are you going to make um, cellular connection work? And our answer is this mesh network. So by utilizing a relay station, all of these collars can sync together and kind of ping off of each other and provide a very secure and low energy cellular connectivity. Additional sensors that we plan on um, adding, one being a muscle um, contractor so that we can actually track those feed intake levels and a microphone. You'd be surprised what you can learn about the health of a cow just by listening. Um, for energy optimization, you might have noticed there was a solar panel on there. We plan to fully power it with solar and we are currently testing that. We have two out in the field right now. Um, and then we'll have a backup battery in case something were to go wrong. And then another unique factor we have is sleep mode, so when we're not pushing data actively, we'll, we'll shut that system down so that we're conserving energy. Current management practices right now really are ineffective and time, time costly. Farmers go out two, three, four times a day during calving season and check their cows and physically look at them. This is what I call the paper towel. I, I went through my brother's truck over the weekend and found this. This is his notes, number 44, heifer in the hill pasture, has a check mark, she should be calving soon. We want to eliminate this system. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. um, for, In terms of our competition, right now we have two on the market. So her dog here, they're in a beta right now, they're an air tag that tracks temperature. Um, they are mainly focused on herd management for the most part. And then Moo Call, um, it's actually a tail counting device, so you place these on the tail and they count the movements up. And their main focus is heat detection, but they're trying to move into calving. Um, these are expensive systems. Her dog is about $1,200 just to start up, plus the, that cost of those ear tags. And then the tail, the tail mount is $350 per unit per cow. And we want to provide, our value proposition lies in providing these producers with unique calving prediction scores by utilizing science and technology. So these producers are getting a unique score for each animal. So that's going to provide them with that accuracy. And we believe that our customer segments are just as motivated as we are to solving the problem based off of customer interviews, and we've done a lot of them, been to a lot of sale barns. Um, so and we, because the beef industry is the largest sector of agriculture, we wanted to make sure that we were honing in on the correct target market. So we've decided that that mid-sized farm, that 100 to 500 cow calf operation, is the perfect size farm for this product. And we're actually in the beef bread basket, if you didn't know. Um, the Midwest, these states are the, some of the highest producing cattle states. We're in a great area for this market. 
which leads us into our opportunity. The beef industry is huge, and it always has been. You can see since 2000, we haven't really dwindled much in our production. We're sitting at 27, 28 billion pounds of beef being produced per year in the United States. And with the rise in the population and the rise in the average age of these farmers, we have little room for error in this industry. In terms of our market approach, we, can, we plan on continuing um, our creating our algorithm and testing that. We're trying to test a lot of these things right now. Um, while simultaneously chasing our patent. We've signed a memorandum of understanding with Scholar Incorporated, which is an open platform um, uh, scholar system, and we want to put our technology in to their um, open platform. And then we uh, plan on con contacting pharmaceutical <coughs> companies as well as attending different veterinarian events. A lot of people will ask me, how are you going to utilize uh, or how are you going to convince these farmers to buy your product? It's easy. You have to deworm your cows 30 days before they calf, so why not bring them up and put the collar on them, increase those profits. Retained placentas are a huge issue um, in terms of reproductive status for cows, so if you know when she's calf, we can prevent that problem. Lastly, USDA requires organic markets to provide a full history on their animals. With our collar, you can already have that in your software system. In terms of our financial revenue model, we're going to do a beta test pack. We already have a list of farmers from Texas to Illinois who want to pr participate in this. So we're going to provide that at a cost and then offer them a discount later. We're going to bundle our, bundle our collars and sell them like that in conjunction with the subscription. And as well, we're looking into leasing options. If we take a look at our financial projection and we talk about the 3.2 million calves that are lost each year, say that their mother was wearing one of our collars. If we pierce just 0.5% of that market and sell these at $100, we're going to gross $800,000, and that's with our expenses taken out. We plan on producing this at production between $30 and $40. 10% is $16 million. Use of funds go to furthering our prototype development, as well as um, per perfecting this algorithm. Um, sensors and materials are a cost. That cost is about $150 per um, call. We've created about three of them now. And then legal work is something we really prioritize, so we'll need a lot of help with that with our patent. In terms of milestones and traction, We've been in LLC since 2018. Um, we've partnered with Scholar. We have a welcome event in Kansas City in two weeks together. Um, we've worked with a number of wonderful people from the Ready Hub and Missouri Innovation Center to get us to where we are today. Um, as well as we've been contacted recently by BI Animal Health as well as Midmark, two of the leading animal health companies in the world. Um, I actually came up with this in 2015 when my family was just experiencing a lot of calf death. Um, and I got really frustrated and it was super um, financially burdened on our family and on our farm. And so I called vets and I called farm stores and no one had an answer to the problem. So I go, maybe we can figure this out. So I used my animal science degree and a lot of professors at the University of Missouri to do a bunch of research. And that's kind of how this whole thing started. Um, in terms of technology, um, Scott Christensen is our technical advisor who's spearheaded um, our prototype development. He's a marketing professor as well as a businessman, super awesome. Um, and then with Scholar, we have Lisa Tamio, who's the CEO. She's built a lot of successful companies, including a lot of work with Autodesk. Um, and then John Kennedy is their um, engineer. And we plan on closing the skills gap with them and the distribution. And with that, we are requesting $30,000 to continue development of our prototype. And my name is Libby Martin, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. the farmer to support the system uh, for hunting or whatever? Yeah, so one thing that we want to provide them is this um, option to bundle. Um, so if they want to own the collars, say they need 20 because they have a calving season in the fall, we'll um, offer that at around $100 per unit and then protect it under a warranty. Um, and the one thing we're also looking to do is leasing. So um, if a farm doesn't have two calving seasons and they just have one and they don't want to keep the technology year round, they can utilize it, pay a premium price for that and send it back and then um, keep their subscription to their data so that they have access to that throughout the year. Can you talk a little bit more about the relationship with Scholar? Are you going to be able to leverage like existing customer base with them? Yes. Uh, so Scholar, um, they're an open platform um, hardware. So basically what they do is provide the shell and the customer service aspect of things. And so they let technology companies such as myself come in and kind of be the app to their collar. And so they've been working out of the small animal industry for a long time. Um, but they haven't actually pierced the large animal market. So we're going to be the first people to do that with them. They've already been touring the U.S. Um, and kind of 
meeting farmers, talking to them about what their pain points are, and that's kind of how we met. Um, and they're moving from California to Kansas City, and they're transferring their company to the Midwest to work on this. So um, it's really great to have them close by. patterns in the biometrics that indicate an issue with the cow and then are you telling the farmer how to then deal with that and prevent the death? Yeah, absolutely. So we know scientifically that there are different biomedical parameters that change every time right before calving each animal. Um, so for example, her activity levels are going to spike. She's going to be antsy. She's going to start experiencing maternal behavior, nesting. So she's going to be walking around the pasture and she's going to separate herself from the rest of the herd. Is it a problem? Or is that she's it's first? just indicating that she's getting ready to go into first phase cabin, which is her water breaking, expelling the placenta, that kind of thing. And so um, in addition to that, her heart rate's going to increase, her temperature is going to drop, and she's going to stop eating. And this all occurs about 24 to 12 hours beforehand. You really start noticing these spikes. And then around six hours, it's it's all in that. So is this just yeah. alerting the farmer to go support? Yes. yes. Like so not necessarily that there is a problem. You don't right. know there's a problem. Right. So this is alerting the farmer, hey, especially for beef producers, they're out on open pasture a lot of the time and don't have access to facility like a nice barn, say the dairy industry does. So this is going to tell them, hey, go check your cow. You'll know exactly where she's at because that's usually a big issue too. They like to get down in the brush, down in really inconvenient areas. So they'll go find their check situation. If it's all great, she can have a, her birth just fine out in the field. But if the calf is positioned wrong, kind of like in one of those photos I showed you, or she's in distress, we need to call a vet and get a vet there so that we can avoid any issues um, that can happen, which is very common. It happens on every farm. We've already experienced it twice this calving season. So I, I noticed you talked about going about going after mid-range to larger operations. Have you considered how you might uh, apply this to smaller operations? Because there are a lot of hobby farm that's on the grow, if you will, and I would think those folks would have less expertise when it comes to managing their calving operations. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think there definitely is um, use for it in smaller farms, especially those people who are experimenting with, say, select breeds. Um, but. We initially decided on mid-sized farms just so when we launch we have a good market that we know this will be able to be utilized in those practices. Um, but looking towards smaller farms, yes, is definitely something we want to do in the future. And we, we want to offer our product to any size farm. It's just we'll go after those mid first. first. Yeah. What type of organization will you build to do that? In terms of? Well, getting, to, getting the market. Yeah, so that's one great thing Scholar brings is they've already kind of tapped the market and know a lot of large pharmaceutical companies. They've done a lot of work with people who run that marketing side of things. So we really plan on utilizing them to get our name out there and our face out there. Um, I have a lot of good connections just from going to things like Sadness Symposium and meeting people do that. I think we can get, say, a booth there and to market our product. But Scholar's going to really be huge. She has a lot of experience in distribution. Do you have an internal team though, or you say we? So, uh, so I say we because we have Scott and then Lisa and John. We all like we have like bi-weekly phone conferences and stuff. So I just refer to us and no. all together. <laughs> so how do you see that relationship evolving in terms of construction? Yeah. So she provides a lot of like things that I don't have as much experience in. So say like how to launch or how to scale quickly. Right. But are you licensing your IP to them or? No, so no, it's mainly a partnership. So they're providing the hardware, I'm providing the technology and in conjunction together, we'll have an agreement. That's a contract we do need to round up, but I'm not going to be like selling in my IP or anything. It's kind of just working together. We are open to licensing in the future, but that's, we're working with Scholar currently.